Okay, so let us start by paying homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. <clears throat> Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodhasa May our homage to the Buddha, the Blessed One and the Enlightened One. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. <clears throat> okay, welcome back everybody uh, for coming back again. Uh, this is the week 18 of our Buddhism in English uh, level 4. And we have uh, come up again with a very present, uh, special presentation from Venerable Kusala and with a great topic of mindfulness. Um, in daily life based on Satipatthana Sutta. And of course, some students in here, they have learned this Sutta before. Uh, some have learned in Cambodian version, uh, yet some have learned in English version. So I think it's a great opportunity to have uh, Pante Kusla here with us to present uh, uh, related with the overview of Satipatthana Sutta, since we all have learned uh, some uh, you know basic theories of this sutta, so it is good to um, improve ourselves more uh, with the expertise on the subject. So as everybody, everybody have seen the post, uh, Pante Kusala is a Buddhist monk from uh, originally from Sri Lanka, and uh, he earned he entered monastic life at the age of sixteen and completed his studies in Sri Lanka. Italy and also at the Harvard Divinity School, USA. He has conducted research on mindfulness, provided spiritual care in US hospitals and taught at universities as a lecturer in Bali. Pande Kusala helps children, youth and adults with their spiritual counseling needs. He currently is a resident monk at the Cambridge Peace House in Massachusetts, USA. Uh, thank you again, Pante, for spending the time uh, to be here with us and share the presentation uh, about the teachings of mindfulness uh, based on Satipatthana Sutta. So, Pante, the floor is yours. Uh, you want to you... have share the screen, Pante? Or... Yes, if you put that uh, booklet on the screen, that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you, Pante, for this kind introduction. and. Um, this sutta uh, is one of my favorite suttas, and I have uh, the honor to prepare this uh, sort of sentence by sentence and made it a booklet in a short form. And it is now available for people to purchase on Amazon. And I'm thinking of making an extended version of this so that people can read perhaps word by word, but with the availability of internet now, <clears throat> there are sources that you can use. And when, it, when you hover over one word, it shows the Pali word and vice versa, whether you are reading it in Pali or in English, you have the ways to now navigate between the two languages. It is always important to go to the original Pali as you start reading a sutra. So you start to come closer to the language being spoken by the Buddha. So that is what I will encourage for everyone when reading any sutta, uh, please try to also keep side by side, keep Pali, so that you get a sense of what the Buddha, what kind of words the Buddha used and um, how intense uh, the language became as the Buddha approached certain points. That shows us the importance of studying a sutra uh, close to the original Pali. 
So now this is the booklet. And if we go all the way to the beginning of it, you see um, the introductory parts of the sutta. In it, uh, the Buddha, uh, it's not here, please go, go further down. <clears throat> In it, the Buddha has laid down uh, the purpose of uh, teaching this sutra, uh, all the way down to Pali. So there is the introduction. Yeah, it takes some, um, yeah, right here. The, you see now it has become easy for you to read through this kind of text. Evang me sutang, thus I have heard. So that is where we begin. This is the part where I chose where the Buddha gave the teaching. This is the story part, the Nidana part. The Buddha taught this in Kuru country. Uh, where very intelligent uh, people have said to have lived. And uh, let's go to the next section. And here it says the word ekayano ayam bhikkave maggo. Ayam, this bhikkave, monks, is maggo, the path that is ekayano. So I try to translate it as all inclusive path that it has both. Samatha and Vipassana. If you were looking for terms like that, tranquility and insight, both acting here. Um, it is not the only path as many would you know, suggest, but it is uh, all inclusive. It has everything that you are looking for. This is why we need to study the Sutta. If we say it is the only path, uh, then all the other Sutras taught by the Buddha become invalid. So what you need to think about this is that it is like having a well in the middle of the forest. And when you want to get to the well, you have many ways to reach to the well. It's not just one direct path. This, this path has that directness. And once you learn this, this becomes your daily uh, practice, honestly that there, you understand that there's no way one can practice without the ways described in the Sati, Satipatthana Sutta. And you, you can ask yourself uh, these questions. What is the purpose of learning this? And it is laid down right here. The Buddha gives this teaching for Satanang Visuddhya, for the purification of beings. Imagine yourself a being who needs some purification, and this practice does that. Soka Paridhavanang Samati Kamaya, for the overcoming of sorrow, that is Soka, and lamentation, Paridhavanang. Dukkha Domanasanang Adha Gamaya, for the disappearance of Dukkha and discontent. Nyaya Sadhigamaya, for the attainment of the true method. Nibbana Sasachikiriyaya for the realization of Nibbana. So let me point out several things. Here we found the word Satip, um, Satipadhana toward the end for the Yadidan Chattaro Satipadhana, uh, namely the four Satipadhanas. And uh, Sati means mindfulness, Padhana means establishing of it. And that means it is not only mindfulness that does the job, it is this understanding that you need to purify yourself and you need to understand the true way and you need to realize the truth. And for these goals, you are going to establish mindfulness together with other uh, wisdom, other wisdom factors. So mindfulness alone, um, is not enough 
you know, mindfulness done with wisdom, absolutely enough. The other thing is that you came across Dukkha Domana Sanang Attagamai, uh, overcoming suffering, Dukkha, and Domanas, unsatisfactoriness. So in any moment where you feel uneasy in your mind, that is Dukkha. In any moment where you feel easy in your mind, that is Sukha. So uneasiness is something that is difficult to bear and we tend to reject it in our experience. We tend to not want it. We tend to say no to it. And that's this, that disliking and rejecting and getting wanting to get rid of something creates a certain amount of dukkha. It is like a college kid going to college and not liking that experience. It is like a kid using a computer game and the mother pulls the cable and the kid does not like it. It's like a toy given to a cat and you try to steal it and the cat dislikes it. So all these occasions is um, an example of something is there and that you want that something and it doesn't happen the way you intend it to work. And this is when suffering and unsatisfactoriness, domanas, domanas comes from dum mana. Mana is the mind. Dhummana is the mind that's darkened, that is uh, unhappy. So this is our daily life. You want to cook and you can't. You want to stay healthy and you can't. You want to uh, go visit someone and you maybe the circumstances are there, but you, you still have no financial means to do that. And this can create a certain amount of suffering. And if only you know how to uh, look at it with your own wisdom, and there Satipatthana comes and helps you. And this is the format right here. The Buddha gives four Satipatthanas, Katame Chattaro, what for? Ida Bhikkave Bhikkhu, here monks, the monk, Kaye Kaya Nupasi Viharati, abides observing the body. This is the first way to establish mindfulness. But in doing those, look. Mindful and having removed greed and well covetousness and covetousness and unsatisfactoriness with regard to the world. So look at these preparatory words. This is preparing someone to actual practice. And the first one is ardent. Ardent means with the effort, endeavor to overcome your defilements, knowing that these defilements exist and now that you want to overcome them. Sampajanu. This is not just janati, this is not just knowing, this is sampajanati, knowing fully your experience internally and externally. Satima, before even establishing mindfulness, you have to have mindfulness with you. You have to have, you have to be mindful. And then Vinaya, having let go of Loke with regard to your own world, Abhijja covetousness, extreme attachment to certain things, and dhomanasa, uh, discontent, again, unhappiness. If there is any unhappiness in your world, in your mental world, you are supposed to let go of it. And if there is a strong attachment bothering you right now, that too should be relinquished before you establish before you begin establishing mindfulness bodily. And let's go over to the next section. It shows Vedana Su Vedana Nupasi Viharati abides observing feelings. Aside from the body, you also observe your feelings with the same qualities 
preparatory qualities, being free from any attachment toward wanting certain feelings present and also unhappy about certain uh, experiences in your life. So atapi, ardent, sampajano, fully aware, satima, mindful, vinaya lokya bijjado manasa. Let me tell you something interesting here. Suppose you buy uh, an electro electronic device and you bring it home and you know there is the manual. There is the catalog, like how to assemble this electronic device and how to plug it into the power. But without reading it, you're just gonna think that you know how to put it together and you plug it, boom, it's burned. So what happened now is that right now you are going to open that catalog and start reading it to see where things went wrong. And this is exactly what we are all doing today, that many years we may have been practicing mindfulness, but not seeing the benefit of it. And when it has gone wrong like that, you can now take the book and see where things are properly laid down and what you may have not understood and what you may have not done properly. So first we started with the body and now with the feelings. And third, chitte chittanu passi viharati, abides observing the mind, ardent, fully aware, mindful, being free from covetousness and discontent in regard to the world. And number four, dhamme su dhammanu passi viharati, abides observing dhamma, phenomena. This is the experience that you may be experiencing at the moment, one of the hindrances, one of the seven awakening factors, and any one of those. Even when you are observing the phenomena, you are ardent, fully aware, mindful, being free from covetousness and discontent in regard to the world. Again, when you are crazily attached to something or grief stricken that there is so much grief happening in your life, it is not the time to begin practicing the Satipatthana Sutta straight away. You get to calm down and recover from that situation, mental situation. This is like Kisa Gotami asking life for her dead son. And in that amount of intense grief, she's not definitely, she's not able to grasp the deeper profundity of the sutta. So the Buddha would not teach her the Satipatthana without uh, showing her a way. Okay, go, some, uh, go to the city, go to the village and get a bunch of mustard seed from a family uh, of some of a family that someone has in someone of that family has not died and she could not find one but giving that time for her to process her own thinking allowed her to overcome the grief that she was dealing with now we are coming to the observation of the body begin that this has six aspects that you need to uh, be aware of uh, in terms of establishing mindfulness in your body. Uh, you have six methods of doing it. Remember that, okay? Um, <clears throat> the Buddha is asking a question, and how monks does he abide observing the body? Kathanja bhikkave bhikkhu kaye kayanupasse viharati. Now, the first aspect is breathing, anapana. Idha bhikkave bhikkhu, here monks, a monk, aranya gatova, having gone to the forest, or rukka mula gatova, having gone to a root of a tree, sunya gara gatova, or to an empty hut. Nisidati palankang abujitva, sits down in a posture. Ujung kayang panidhaya, holding his body erect and parimukhang sating upattapetva, setting mindfulness to the forefront. 
So Sato Vasasati, really mindful, he breathes in. Sato Vasasati, really mindful, he breathes out. And here, did you see anywhere in the sutta telling you to focus at the tip of your nose? It did not. Why? Because that is not necessary. Wherever the breath is, you got to be mindful. However subtle your body uh, and breath, however subtle your breath becomes, with intense amount of mindfulness, heightened amount of mindfulness, you are able to grasp it, notice it, and see that the breath is present at a certain place. With that comes tranquility and calming down, and there is also insight, uh, wisdom that you will be applying. And now, uh, the second stage of breathing, Dīgaṅva Asasanto, Breathing in long, dīgaṁ asasāmi iti pajānāti. Although I say it is step one, so there is the training step one. That when you are breathing in long, you understand you are breathing in long. When you are breathing out long, you understand you are breathing out long. And when you are breathing in short, you understand you are breathing in short. So it is both breathing in long and short that became your progressive instruction and to the next experience in the whole body he trains himself to breathe in experience in the whole body he trains himself to breathe out that is how do you experience the whole body maybe you can now take a deep breath in didn't you feel your whole upper body with your shoulders and stomach all getting filled, including your lungs, all getting filled with air? So you are now experiencing the whole body. If you think that it is the whole breath body, the Buddha does not say that. Although um, sabbakaya, you know, sabbakaya, is whole body, but some people like to translate it as whole breath body. But again, whether it is the breath body or the whole body, it is something that is the breathing is done bodily. So you start to feel the body as you breathe in and breathe out. And notice that there's no harm doing that, doing there. There's no harm doing that because you are not indulging your defiled state of mind. You are just choosing an object that is formless, colorless, to train your mind. And now, pasambhayang kaya sankhara. This comes from the word pasambhati, that is a Pali word. And uh, pasambhati means calming down. Now this pasa is not P-H-A, pasa. That pasa is contact. But this is P-A-S-S-A. Pasambhayang, pas, from Pasambhati, calming bodily formation. Now, this is calming your breath, letting it become so subtle. Asasisami the Sikhati. Here you have a Pali verb that is Sikhati. Some, you train yourself. Asasisami the Sikhati. He trains himself. Now you've got to train that part. How to calm, how to tranquilize your body as you breathe in and breathe out. And the Buddha gives a simile. Just as monks, a skilled turner. You know, have you seen these machines they use in Asia uh, yeah. to polish wood? Mm -hmm. Right? So a skilled turner or his apprentice a student of him, when he's making a long turn, he's just, he doesn't have to think of it. He just does it, right? You know, as he do the work, he understands that he's making a long turn. Rasangva Anchanto, or when he's making a short turn, when he's polishing the, you know, the wood in a short manner, 
he understands that he is making a short turn. Eva meva ko bikkhave, in the same way monks, a monk with the breathing in long, breathing out short, you just don't have to think about it. You just naturally understand that you are breathing in long or breathing out short. That means you don't have to heavily breathe, disturbing anyone else around you. You just have to naturally notice that, you know, you are, your body is doing that breathing in and breathing out. Just get in tuned with that. Okay. Now came to a very, came to a very interesting part. This is when you see Samatha and Vipassana combined together. This insight refrain part is super helpful super useful for you to uh, really cultivate wisdom. And what are these numbers? Okay, now I said in the beginning that um, Kaya Nupasana, establishing mindfulness of body has six aspects. Now this is number one out of six. And these inside refrain parts is repeated 21 times in the sutta. That shows how important it is for us to just practice both tranquility and wisdom, tranquility and insight, samatha and vipassana together. If you ask someone um, what kind of meditation they do, and if they say, I only do vipassana meditation, that is wrong because you are supposed to also be practicing samatha with vipassana. It is like the two sides of a coin. Both sides are interconnected. It's like this side of your palm is connected with the other side of your palm. These two are connected together. You got to practice them together. Without any wisdom, you are not going to get anywhere. You are not going to see the dependent origination. <clears throat> In this way, iti, ajatangva kai, kayanu virati. He remains observing internally in the body. How do you do that? Now, in this sutta toward the, the dhammanupasana section, uh, that is the fourth establishment of mindfulness, the Buddha says, ajatang, you know, ajatika, internal. Uh, parts of the body includes eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, the body, and the mind. These six are internal. And Bahit Dhava Kai Kayan he remains observing externally in the body. So what are the extra what are the external aspects? Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, physical sensations, and thinking. What you see, what you hear, these are external to the body. And ajatta bahiddhava kaye, or both internally and externally, kayanupasi viharati, he remains observing the body. How do you do that? There is eye and there is seeing. What connects the two is eye consciousness, that is internally and externally. You've got to apply your Dhamma knowledge here. And there's ear and the sounds. you got to connect the two of those together. So that is internally and externally. Uh, that is ear consciousness. So when you see that, three things are together. The ear, the sound, and ear consciousness. This makes a contact. Tinnan Sangati Passo, you know, meeting of the three, you know, establishes another part of dependently arising experience. This is called contact. And now you came to a very interesting place. Samudaya Dhamma Nupasiva Kaya Kaya Sming Viharati. Or on the nature of arising in the body. You saw the arising with the internal and external and with their respective consciousness, 
there is a rising phenomena, contact came into being. With contact being established, there is feelings established. You are experiencing the arising nature of the body. He remains observing on the nature of passing away in the body. What is passing away here? Passing away is that mental experience of you know, cessation happening. After seeing something and you hear another thing, seeing has vanished and hearing has arisen you start seeing cessation of every experience as you observe your experience this way. And now you are doing the fun play, You remain observing both arising and passing away with regard to your body. And when you do that, this knowledge arises in you that there is a body. Atikayo tiva panas satipachu patita hoti. There is mindfulness established in you that there is this body, just a mere body. And that body uh, has arising and passing away. And this knowledge is to the extent necessary for bare awareness. Yava deva jnana mattaya. You don't get involved. Patisati Mattai for the purpose of continuous mindfulness. Anisito Chaviharati. And you are going to remain unassociated. You are not going to get involved with the arising or passing experience. And to establish that point further, the Buddha says. Not clinging to anything in the world. In this way, too, monks, the monk, Kaye remains observing on the body. So that is only one part of establishing mindfulness with regard to the body. And now come the postures. There are four postures. Gachantova when walking. Gachamiti pajanati. He understands he's walking. Titova when standing. Titom hiti pajanati. He understands that he is standing. Nisinnova when sitting. Nisinnom hiti pajanati. He understands that he is sitting. Sayanova when lying down, sayanom hiti pajanat. He understands that he is lying down. So, if one would think that some things are not included in this, yatha yatha va panasakayo panihito ho tatha tatha na pajanat. However, his body is disposed, he understands in those ways. That means every movement of your body is included in establishing mindfulness and clear comprehension uh, through this method. And let's go further down. That too has insight refrain that I have not elaborated here uh, because I already explained it. And that is number two of insight refrain. And this is, again, the Buddha is entering a, a sphere of all the activities that a person would do this uh, and establishing mindfulness according all the activities abhikante patikante when going forward and returning sampajana kari hoti the verb here is he acts fully aware sampajana kari hoti it's not about you know uh, uh, it's not about practicing, it's just observing what your mind does when you are doing these things, going forward and returning. Alokite vilokite, when looking toward and looking away. Sampajana kari hoti. That means you are, the English is missing there, that you are aware. Saminjite pasarite, when bending and extending his limbs. 
Sanghati Patta Chivaradharune, when wearing his robes and carrying his outer robe and his ball, this is about monks. Asite, when eating, Pite, when drinking, Kaite, when chewing, Saite, when tasting, Sampajana Kari Hoti, he acts fully aware. Uchara Passava Kamme, when urinating and defecating, and Gate, when walking, Tite, when standing, Nisinne, when sitting, Sutte, when falling asleep, Jagarite, when waking up, Bhasite, when you are talking, Tunhi Bhave, when you are remaining silent, Sampajanakari Hoti, he acts fully aware. How do you do that? You observe what your mind is doing and the arising phenomena and cessation phenomena as you are observing your activities of the body. Otherwise, you can drive home and not realize that you, are, you have driven home. Otherwise, you know, you may be talking to someone and you say something, you may not be mindful that you have spoken certain things that can be harmful to someone. Okay, and now inside refrain with regard to the body, uh, that is also done with regard to the this activity. And now we go to the anatomical parts, particular manasikara. Punicha param bhikkave bhikkhu. Furthermore, monks, a monk, imameva kaya, this very body, uddhang padatala, up from the soles of the feet. Adho kesa mattaka, down from the top of the hair. Tacha pariyanta, surrounded by skin. Purang nana pakara sasuchino, full of various kinds of impurity. Pacha vekhati, reflects on it. Atte imasmin kaye, in this body there are kesa, head hairs, loma, body hairs, nakha, nails, danta, teeth. Tacho, skin, mansang, flesh, naharu, sinews, atti, bones, atti, minja, bone marrow, wakkang, kidneys, hadayang, heart, yakanang, liver, kilomakang, plura, pihakang, spleen, paphasang, lungs, antang, balls, antaguna, mesentery, udaryang, Contents of the stomach, karisang, feces, pittang, bile, semhang, phlegm, pubo, pus, lohitang, blood, sedo, sweat, medo, fat, asu, tears, vasa, skin oil, kelo, saliva, singhadika, singhanika, sorry, mucus, lasika, uh, fluid in the joints, mutanti, urine. So this is when you um, observe all the aspects of your body and the Buddha gives a simile. The purpose of practicing this is to cut down any attachment to the body, any attach, any lust, uh, tendencies toward lust in your body, that lust will arise. And Buddha, someone who wants to establish mindfulness in body, to realize the true nature of the body. So the Buddha emphasized it with the simile. Sayata bhikkave ubato mukha mutoli. Just as monks, if a sack with openings at both ends, pura nana vihitasa dhanyasa, were full of various kinds of grain, sayathidang, as follows, salina, hill rice, vihina, red rice, Mugana, beans, masana, kidney beans, tilana, sesame seeds, tandulana, husk rice, tamena and chakkuma puriso, and a man with good eyes, munchitva, open it, pachavikheya, were to reflect. Ime sali, this is hill rice, ime vihi, this is red rice, ime mugga, these are beans, ime masa, these are kidney beans, ime tila. These are sesame seeds, ime tandulati. These are husk rice. This is just an 
ordinary example of just opening a bag which has openings on both ends and seeing what is in there. Just, just things. And you do the insight refrain while you are doing that activity. That is the fourth insight refrain out of the six. And now you move on to a narrowed down focus to four elements called dhatu manasikara. Furthermore, monks, imameva kayang, this very body, yathartitang, however it stands, yathapanihitang, however it is disposed, dhatu so pachavekati, contemplates in terms of elements, not the scientific elements, just the four elements. Atthimas minkaye, in this body there is Patavi dhatu, the earth element, apo dhatu, the liquid element, tejo dhatu, the fire element, vayo dhatu, the wind element. Isn't it interesting now the, that you did 32 parts of the body and now came down to the four elements, just narrowing your focus. This is just a huge mental cognitive game that you play uh, and you see, oh, there's nothing in this body that you can claim as yours. And the Buddha gives a simile to the elements, uh, how you separate them. Say, just as monks, a skilled butcher, his apprentice, Gaving Vaditva, having killed a cow, Chatum Mahapati, at a crossroads, Vilaso Pati Vibhajitva, cutting it up into pieces. So Chatum Mahapati gives the idea that it is a four way road, and now it is the, this butcher has butchered the cow and then split it into four uh, sections. Nisin Noas, he were to sit in the center and just the same way, Eva Meva Kobiku, in the same manner amongst, among Ima Meva Kayang, this very body, Yatatitang, however it stands, Yatapanitang, however it is disposed, Dhatuso, in terms of elements, Pachavekati contemplates. <clears throat> Atti Masmin Kaye, in this body there is. Patavi dhatu, the earth element, apo dhatu, the liquid element, tejo dhatu, the fire element, vayu dhatu, the wind element. Okay. Now the that is the fifth insight refrain part. And we are going to the corpse in decay called Navasivatika. Imagine a corpse and, and you know a corpse decaying in a cemetery. Sayyata Hapi Paseya Sarirang, a monk were to see a body. Sivati Kaya Chaditang, abandoned in a charnel ground. Ekaha Matangwa, one day dead. Dviha Matangwa, two days dead. Tiha Matangwa, three days dead. Uddumata Kang, bloated. Vinila Kang, levit. Vipubbaka Jatang, festering. So Imameva Kaya Mupasang Harati. He applies it to your own body. Ayampiko kayo, this body also. Evang dhammo, such is its nature. Evang bhavi, such is its future. Etang anati toti, such is its unavoidable fate. Now, the second Srivatika is Punachaparam bhikkave, moreover, monks, a monk. If he were to see a corpse, Sivatikaya Chaditang abandoned in the charnel ground, this Kakehiva Kajamana being eaten by crows, Kulalehiva Kajamana being eaten by vultures, Gijehiva Kajamana being eaten by, can you move to a little further, eaten by Gija, hawks, Supanehiva. Kajamana, eaten by dogs, Sigale Hiva Kajamana, eaten by Hainas, jackals, Vivide Hiva Panaka Jate Kajamana, eaten by various other creatures such as worms. And we go to the next Sivatika. 
Attika Sankalika, a skeleton smeared with flesh and blood, and you that is connected with sinews, and you apply it to the body. And the fourth one is Attika Sankalika, Nimmansalohita Makita, fleshless and smeared with blood. And the next one is without flesh or blood. And the uh, sixth one is number six is um, the bones scattered in every direction. Let's go to the seventh because we are running out of time. And bones bleached white. Number eight is bones that is more than a year old. And number nine is bones rotten. These are the nine stages. And you apply it to your own body and understand that this happens to just anybody. And now you do, do the inside refrain. Uh, with that practice, the establishing of mindfulness of with regard to the body ends. So remember, we began with breathing. We went to four postures. We went to all the activities. We went to observing 32 parts of the body. And then we went to four elements and nine stages of a body indicate. These are the six ways to establish mindfulness and practice clear comprehension and wisdom through that practice. <clears throat> Take a little break for uh, 30 seconds. Okay, I'll do, yeah. Now we are going to the feelings part. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think this um, this part is not as you know elaborate as the first part, so we can cover this very quickly. Um, you have three feelings here, and the Buddha is asking, "How does a monk remain observing on feelings?" Sukhang Vedanam Vediamano, when feeling a pleasant feeling, Sukhang Vedanam Vediamiti Pajanat, he understands that I feel a pleasant feeling. Dukhang Vedanam Vediamano, when feeling a painful feeling, Dukhang Vedanam Vediamiti Pajanati. He understands that I feel a painful feeling. Adukkama Sukhang Vedanam Vediamano, when feeling a neither painful nor pleasant feeling, adukkama sukhang vedanam vediyamiti pajanat. He understands that I feel a neither painful nor pleasant feeling. When feeling a worldly pleasant feelings, he understands that I feel a worldly pleasant feeling. This involves, you know, anything that you feel with your body. When feeling an unworldly pleasant feeling that includes not within your own uh, body but beyond uh, in your mental arena. And when feeling a worldly painful feeling, I feel a worldly painful feeling. An unworldly painful feeling, uh, you can go to number 12 footnote, that is hindrances arising. Uh, at the end of page 33, 34. So that is an unworldly, you know, uh, is it a painful feeling? Yeah, you can stay on that page in the beginning. Um, at least let's go a little bit back, a <clears throat> uh, little further up. So there you see that he understands, I'm, I, I feel an unworldly painful feeling that is about hindrances arising in your meditation and it is a painful feeling for you and you observe it it's not involving your body but it arises based on uh, the mental experience okay let's go further down sami sangva adukkama sukham vedanam vediyamaro Feeling a worldly, neither painful nor pleasant feeling. 
he understands that I feel a really neither painful nor present feeling. Let's go to number 13 footnote. And that is indifference that has no mindfulness in it. So uh, that is uh, to be understood. Uh, let's go back to the end of that first. Yeah, so here we are unworldly, neither painful nor present feeling. He understands that he is feeling an unworldly, neither painful nor present feeling. So look, uh, let's look number 14 footnote. Equanimity with mindfulness. No, unworldly, uh, neither painful nor present feeling. That is what you are going to feel at that stage. And you do inside refrain with regard to the feelings, and that ends the feelings section. And we go move to the mind. And how do we observe the mind and establish mindfulness? When there is a lustful mind, you understand it as it is. And when the mind is without lust, uh, you understand it as it is. When the mind is angry, you understand it. When the mind is without anger, you understand it. When the mind is deluded, you understand it. Deluded means you take things personally. And when, you, when the mind is without delusion, you understand it. When the mind is contra contracted, this means you are again being affected by smoke and torpor. When the mind is scattered, that is restlessness, that is a hindrance, you understand it. When the mind is exalted, you know, mahagata, uh, that your mind is experiencing perhaps um, infinite space, you understand it. When the mind is unexalted, you understand it. When the mind is surpassable, you understand it. And the mind is unsurpassable, you understand it. And when the mind is collected, he understands it. When the mind is uncollected, he understands it. When the mind is liberated from certain liberations, he understands it. And the mind is unliberated. You are so mindful and you are able to understand it. And that is numbers, you know, that is number 16 of two, out of 21 refrains that ends of establishing mindfulness with regard to the mind. And now we move to phenomena. So that includes five hindrances. You know, he let's do one of them. He abides observing phenomena in terms of five hindrances. And let's go to the English uh, further down. If sensual desire is present in him, he understands that there is sensual desire in me. Asantanga, if sensual desire is not present in him, he understands that there is no sensual desire present in me. So these are phenomena that you are dealing with and that, that, that requires so much of mindfulness. He understands how unarisen sensual desire can arise, a repeated word. And then he understands how arisen sensual desire can be removed by not focusing on it. He understands how a future arising of the removed sensual desire can be prevented by remaining mindful and remaining establishing your samadhi. We will skip over aversion and sloth and torpor, restlessness and doubt. And we go to five aggregates and we let's keep on going. We observe those as they arise, um, how, how does he abide observing you know, phenomena in terms of five aggregates, such as material form, such as its arising, such as its passing away, such as feelings and perception, formations, consciousness, and their passing away. And you do insight refrain with regard to that. And here, as I said, internal and external senses fears come into being and he abides observing 
six internal and external sense spheres. How does he abide observing phenomena in terms of six internal and external sense spheres? This is what I said earlier. He knows the eye, he understands the forms, and he understands the fetter that arises dependent on both, that is eye consciousness. And then, uh, and he understands how an unarisen uh, sanyojana combination can arise. Uh, that is, eye consciousness can arise. And he understands how the arisen fetter combination can be removed by not, you know, remaining focused on it. And how, uh, un how a future arising of the removed fetter can be prevented. Uh, when it is removed and how can it be prevented. So then you understand the ear, sounds, nose, odors, tongue, taste, body and tangibles, mind and mental phenomena. Now we have come down to 19th out of 21 internal and external uh, insight refrain. And now the seven uh, awakening factors um, I think uh, that is just observing mindfulness and so on, the seven awakening factors. And at this point, you have come so far in your practice. This is really profound level of establishing uh, mindfulness, Satipatthana. You see mindfulness awakening factor, and now you can grasp onto it because it's a wholesome factor. Mindfulness awakening factor is present in him and he knows that it is present. When it is not present in him, he knows that as well. When it is unarisen, you know that it can arise by establishing awareness further. And how the, how the arisen mindfulness awakening factor can be perfected by development bhavanaya paripuri hoti you can perfect it through further bhavana further development you understand it when it comes to that point in investigation of phenomena that is ex investigating your experience awakening factor and you understand that energy awakening factor you understand that joy awakening factor and tranquility awakening factor, collectedness awakening factor, equanimity awakening factor. With each, you understand their arising establishment and how they can be perfected. Okay, that is 20th refraining. And finally, you observe the four noble truths. And how does he abide observing Dhamma? With regard to the Four Noble Truths, you go further down. He, he understands as it actually is, this is suffering. This is the arising of suffering. Let's go down. And the cessation of suffering and the path to path leading to the cessation of suffering. And now you observe the inside refrain with regard to the noble truths. That is last inside refrain that I have elaborated further, but let's skip that and go to the prediction made by the Buddha. The prediction is, Monks, if anyone should develop these four satipatthanas in this way, not the way they think it should be done, but in the way the Buddha actually explained it, to that person, the prediction is one of two fruits can be expected. Let's for, go further down. Either final knowledge, the teva dhamme anya, either final knowledge here and now, sativa upadhi sese anagamita, if there is a trace of clinging left, non-returning. This is when the Buddha made the prediction that you become an arahant here and now, or if there is any, uh, any trace of clinging left, you become an anagami person, non-returner. 
And then the Buddha says, let alone seven years, six years, five years, four years, three years, two years, one year, seven months, and six months, five, four, three, two months, one month, half a month, and within a matter of seven days, that one can reach to that realization, if only you do it the way the Buddha described it. It is because of that the Buddha said that this is the path for the purification of beings, for the overcoming of sorrow and lamentation, for the disappearance of dukkha and discontent, for the attainment of the true method, and for the realization of Nibbana. So that whatever the Buddha said in the beginning, it is for this reason that it was said. That is what the Blessed One said. The monks were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Now understand that you know, some of you may not be well acquainted in the Pali or in English. So I don't expect you to understand it in one going because um, I am familiar with the content and Bhante TV is familiar with the content and um, we monks have studied this over and over for our practice. So let us you know, cultivate some patience. And imagine if you are in the audience as the Buddha is giving this discourse, the Buddha really took time, more than one hour, longer than one hour to really elaborate each point while people were listening and at the same time seeing their practice being established and seeing that establishment really grounding them in the awakening wisdom. So I believe some of you may have questions as we have exceeded little over one hour now. Um, yeah, and I welcome you. your questions. Yeah, thank you so much for your uh, great presentation. Though we have a very short time within one hour, but you managed to run <laughs> over through you know all the chapters in included in Satipatthana Sutta. It's very great detail, actually. So I would like to give the floor to our participants here, our students here. So you may raise your hand or just, uh, you know, uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question related to this topic. Uh, I think very relatable to our daily life uh, based on the teaching of Satipatthana. And, uh, you know, uh, I think by just reading may not feel uh, easy to understand. Uh, maybe practically we have to practice and also uh, get some advice uh, from experienced master, experienced uh, teachers who can guide us uh, according to the teachings of the Buddha. So uh, if any, have, any of you has the question, uh, you can raise. Uh, and raise your hand or just, uh, you know, mute yourself and talk. Uh, before that also, uh, Pante, I maybe just uh, uh, I would like to invite you to give a uh, kind of conclusion that uh, how important that uh, this discourse of the Buddha, Satipatthana Sutta, can be applied in daily life. And uh, uh, as far as you have learned, uh, especially in the United States of America. Uh, I think uh, basically uh, many of the institutions or in different fields, they have taken this kind of uh, mindfulness uh, base, uh, you know, according to the Buddha's teaching to apply in the different fields uh, to cope with different problems in the, you know, I mean, in the, in the world right now that we are facing. So, uh, what is like your experience that you have come across? Uh, I mean, you've been uh, to different hospitals in USA and apply uh, mindfulness method to help in different uh, entities. So how was your experience like uh, using mindfulness method to help others? Unfortunately, Bhante, um, this, the extent that we discussed today is not present in many places I have been to that they think that mindfulness is just a relaxation technique for most people. 
and that the assumption uh, in Asia is that people here are choosing Buddhism because they are stressed. That may be true, but um, it is not how things happen. People listen to podcasts for quick relaxation and understanding certain things. And uh, rarely someone um, may go this deeper into understanding what the, actual, what the Buddha actually taught. And in hospitals, I think I used uh, hospitals and assisted living facilities. Sometimes they say, I can't breathe and I need something else. So this is why I think that someone needs to practice it when they can breathe, when they can you know, experience proper bodily functions. But those people, for those who could not breathe, I had to use a method of guided meditation to discipline them, I mean, to train them in a certain way. And especially with this one doctor who had Parkinson's, I saw that he was struggling to stay, remain calm. So I could use, uh, he, he liked uh, explaining his experience and he liked uh, somehow um, meditating together while his body was still shaking. And he, um, he wanted some music being played in the background. So it, you can't really do too much uh, other than maybe reading a poem and offering a prayer and uh, and doing a little technique like breathe in peace, breathe out, let go with patients in hospitals. And I think that is the last thing they do before dying. Yeah. And sometimes that is what uh, I have experienced some, some patients did. And before their families came, they died. And the family wanted to do that exact practice because I was the last contact with the patient. And in daily life, um, you see, it's not what we think that the Buddha has explained. It's not just daily life, it is a whole life that is part of this, <clears throat> part of this sutta. And that means anything uh, that is in part of your experience in your whole life, is part of, uh, is a, as a call for you to establish mindfulness. And for someone who is dealing with anger, for example, they can use the second aspect, the Vedana Anupasana, establishing mindfulness of feelings to see that anger and see the disappearance of it and use the insight refrain, vipassana's side, to see the arising of experience internally and uh, arising of experience externally and the meeting of the two, uh, and then contact arising and not getting involved with it, that you don't take that anger personally. And when you see the insight, your expectation and your reality will be very drastically you know, your, ex your expectation of anger to do something for you and the reality will be closer to you and the gap between the two becomes thinner and you start to understand that you were making a building a world that did not exist in terms of your anger and you are now seeing the reality of it. By seeing the reality, coming to vijja, coming to uh, right understanding, that only that is the way to getting rid of ignorance. And that is perhaps the best thing you can do in your daily life, to be free from anger and living a beneficial life toward yourself and others. I hope that helps. Yeah, Bande. Uh, anyone want to ask a question? Uh, I, I see the comment on the, from the social media. Someone asked about can you clarify the, the section when you talk about how you a person practice samatha and vipassana together? And they, yeah. So every uh, aspect of the Satipatthana Sutta comes with uh, insight refrain. For example, in the very beginning, you saw uh, samatha part, that is breathing in, breathing out. And immediately after that, 
you see how experience arising and experience vanishing is to be observed. That is the insight part. That is how you do Samatha and Vipassana together. In observing that experience, the bodily experience internally and externally, and how the two connect with consciousness and how contact arises. And from contact, Pasapacha Vedana, from contact to feelings, and feelings are threefold, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. And that means there's craving. You start to see both the tranquility and insight, and that you are pra now practicing them together, that each give companionship toward relinquishment. If they don't, uh, if they are not practiced together, uh, your mind will not be tranquilized your mind will perhaps do intense tranquility or intense insight, but because they are not in harmony together, your progress will be slowed. So that should be done uh, with wisdom and proper cultivation without uh, any clinging to even your own practice. I hope that clarifies it. Okay, Pante, thank you. Uh, any other question in the classroom? Okay, I think if not, uh, we'll let the ball go because it is almost your lunch time. So we'd like to uh, express our heartfelt thanks, appreciation for most memorable Pante Kusila for spending your invaluable time uh, sharing with us your knowledge about mindfulness. And I hope to see you again <laughs> soon, Pante. So uh, the best wishes and to you and to everyone as well by the power of our gift of Dhamma. May all beings uh, be benefited uh, the wisdom of the Dhamma and also may all be well and happy. So we'd like to uh, do with chanting to conclude our session to today by uh, sharing merit to all beings. Thank you so much, Pante. Thank you. Bye, Pante. Thank you.